Hey, today we are going to talk about investments. Are you excited? <laughs> I am. So, first, what are derivatives? In my last lecture, I have said that the stock market was a risky investment because the prices change perpetually, okay? So, the prices are not stable. Now, how to deal with the risk involved? I'm introduced. I'm introducing you now to derivatives. Yay! So, see stocks as an underlying factor, okay? So, stocks are underlying factors. An example of other underlying factors that we have are interest rate, exchange rates, commodity prices, okay? So, derivatives are financial contracts whose returns are derived from those of an underlying factors. Remember, the underlying factors are interest rate, exchange rates, and commodity prices. Okay, now there is a, corre a correlation uh, between the performance of derivatives and the underlying factors. And this correlation may be positive or negative. By the way, correlation means that the two behave the same way or in an opposite direction but all this is done linearly okay so as an investor or a trader what do you want to do investors make decision to purchase a stock when they believe it is undervalued undervalued means the stock is worth more than it is sells it sells for okay so this is the reason why you your first you first need to rely on news okay news favorable news about a certain uh, firm performance is a good sign usually it is a good sign to purchase the stock it's like a signal to you to say that oh go ahead and purchase the stock okay since the main point here is to determine if the stock is undervalued or overvalued, some skilled investors may use some stock valuation methods to estimate the real value of the stock. And these methods are the fundamental analysis or the technical analysis. The fundamental in the fundamental analysis, I breathe. In the fundamental analysis, we have the um, price earning ratio, the dividend discount models, etc. Or you can use the technical analysis to value the stock and uh, compare with the offered price, the offer prices if it's undervalued or overvalued, okay? Now, the last thing you want to do is to choose the type of derivatives able to offset the risk involved in the stock that you hold, okay? For example, if you believe that the stock price will go up in the future and you are a buyer, you may secure the price of your stock with a call option. A call option gives you, as an investor, the right but not the obligation to purchase. In our case, because it can be any underlying factors, but in our case, it is stock. So, in our case, stock at a later date, um, yeah, at a later date, at the price agreed, agreed upon the day you are going to purchase the option. Okay, I hope that it's clear. Now, what are the type of derivative contract that we have? We have four types. We have the options. The options is a contract between two parties, a buyer and a seller, of course, giving the buyer of the option the right, but not the obligation. Note that to purchase or sell an underlying factor at a later date at a price agreed when the purchase is made, okay? The second one is the forward contract. The forward contract is between two parties again and it gives the buyer of the contract the obligation to purchase or sell an underlying factor. Remember, underlying factor can be commodities, um, Currencies, it can be uh, stocks, okay, at a later date, at a price ag agreed, agreed, when the purchase is made, okay. So the third one is the future contract, a contract between two parties, a buyer and a seller to buy or sell an underlying factor at a future date, but this one is based on daily settlement procedure, okay. We will see that in another video. At a price agreed, when the purchase is made 
and this this last one is generally used it's called swaps at the end it is generally used in a currency exchange okay so it is a contract in which two parties agree to exchange cash flows okay so however in this one it's not uh, a buyer and a seller but a firm commitment to do the transaction at a future date so i give you an example if Nadej lives in France and, I, and she receives a cash flow in Euro, I live in US and I receive a cash, I mean cash flows in US dollar. If I want Euro and Nadej wants dollars, it is possible to do it under the swaps contract. Though, to do that, we are going to contract a swap dealer who will serve to facilitate the transaction. Of course, with terms customized to both parties, I mean, to I and Nadege, okay? Also, keep note that this one is in service of transaction. It's not like in the future, you are you are just going to purchase it at a, a specific date. No, it's going to be in term of series, and you will see that later on. So, I'll leave you with that, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.